<laughs> oh, are you recording the faces now as well? Kyle, come back. Put your butt back. That's where we're starting. <clears throat> Kyle, Hello. come back. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> come on, you frogger. Yeah. Do you have a frog hop into your house? Do you not? No. Can't plug this in for some reason. I don't see him, oh, but I just see shelf unit like shaking around. <laughs> yeah, he'll be fine. Are right, you ready? Yeah. Gonna block with the light there. There you go. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Good start. So, who would like to do the recap? Probably one of the two that died. Technically, I was the only one that died. <laughs> But no, I will pass. Star doesn't remember anything anyway. Touche. <sighs> Come on, Ryan. It's been a while since you did one. You can do it. I have faith in you. No, I can't because I blocked. I tend to block that out of my memory. Okay, <laughs> I'll do it. You got it. All right. All right. Last time on the Great Unknown. Sir Barros and Evening Star uh, had their little expedition off to uh, where Star was born. Unfortunately, they ran afoul of a trap, and Evening Star ended up in combat with her own mind. Uh, that went very poorly, and uh, she died. However, given that there was a paladin of the Raven Queen on hand, Sir Barros was able to have the Raven Queen intercede on his behalf bring Evening Star back to life. The only caveat being that now she had no memories. After a brief chase, uh, the Crooked Eye cultists, uh, they managed to uh, give those cultists the slip and ride back into Natoon, where they met up with the rest of our uh, gaggle of good-looking folks. Um, trying to think, what else went on. Uh, Seven had a magic lesson. Seven and Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet slept three days straight. And then, um, you know, we had some minor character development. It, oh, it come really on. wasn't a big deal. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, Gig made himself a helper uh, named Cog, right? Yes. So now we have a mobile blacksmith and, uh, and heal bot. We have Gar, uh, who's going to be under instructions from his mistress uh, to be following us. Way to tell everybody. Oh, you know, everybody at home, but <laughs> I don't know that. And we have uh, uh, Rowan, Evening Star, Barrows, Scarlet. Everybody's getting ready to go right now. Uh, we were told... As soon as uh, Barros and Amy Star came back into town uh, about the situation, uh, me and uh, Gig and Barros all tried to get her memories to come back uh, with uh, mixed results. Uh, she's kind of got alphabet soup for memories right now. But uh, under these circumstances and knowing that it is likely that the Crooked Eye is looking for her and knows where we are, we decided in the morning, first thing, to be uh, getting out of Dodge as quick as we can. Yeah, and Scarlet and Seven Kissed. Yeah, I was just about to say, and Seven Kissed Scarlet. And Seven Kissed Scarlet. <laughs> Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Like, just skip that? Yeah, you don't just yeah. skip that? Nope, no. Nope. I mean, I'm not going to drag down gloss, the overarching okay. narrative with my personal <laughs> drama. You don't get to just gloss over it like you tried to do. All no. right. Seven had an emotional breakthrough, and, you know, he thought Scarlet was dying, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, power of true love and all that is, is rather cheesy, and it seemed to work. It works Seven's, heart, Seven's heart grew three sizes that day and mm -hmm. promptly died. <laughs> yeah, but I'd say, of, uh, Hyper cardiitis or something like that. I don't know. So, I, I I do not know medical terms, but anyway. Um, so, to go ahead and take your inspiration. You did it. 
I gave mine to Barrows last time. And all of the the information, Seven, has been flooding your mind, and you need a moment to process it. So if you want to go ahead and start your ritual. I will. As we get out to the wagon, I say, let me... Allow me to enter the wagon, prepare a space, and think this through. Because uh, was Gig and Evening Star in character debating what to do, or was that all out of character? You mean Scarlet? I was, I wasn't debating with Gig. That that pretty much everything that was going on was out of character. Okay, not a problem. Not a problem. Um, not hey, no worries. So, um, I will just say to them. I want to see if the magic that I've learned over the last few days would give us an edge in dealing with the people who are following us. Um, just give me a few minutes to think, and I'll see if I can provide us with some better direction. All right, exactly how long do you need? DM, how long do you think this will take? It'll probably take you approximately ten minutes. Give me ten minutes, Honest. and hopefully I'll have an answer for you. Good. I'll be back in nine minutes. I'm gonna go sell some cop cod pockets. <laughs> cod pockets. And seven will uh, give his first attempt at true divination. Cod pockets. I see cod pockets getting huge. They're gonna be a big thing. Okay. So oh, yes. seven. Traffic cardio my app. There we. Go. Yes, Steve. What are you feeding into this ritual? Into this ritual, I'm feeding a third level spell slot. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be burning that raw arcana. I'm going to be feeding information as well that I've been mulling over. Okay. Uh, everything I know about the Crooked Eye. Okay. Go ahead and. The top of the. Mm hmm. Go ahead and detail the facts that you are plugging into this. <clears throat> the facts. Right. So, from as early as the Beaver Dam, we have encountered these crooked eyes. So, as you work through it, you start seeing an image of the large cavern, or the, the large room within the Beaver Den kind of manifest, and you see it in front of you now. <laughs> Um, you see the summoning circle, or sorry, not the summoning circle, the uh, thaumaturgy circle. You see the chains, you see the the tables, the writing left by Barrows, the bowl, and the burning doll. I see it all. So, the crooked eye was there, and then they weren't. That tells me that they had some way to teleport. And if they have a rift pilot amongst their number, and they had a way to summon others to their location, like a mystical item, like the bowl that they were using, it means that there's not just seven Crooked Eye in the area. They could have reinforcements. They could have a small army. And as you touch upon these thoughts you start seeing a sh it's almost like a shadowy image it's built more than remembered of a red crystal of a bowl of blood and a red portal forming around the red crystal uh, so any one of their agents could be in the city right now. We don't know how many of them they are. We don't know how to identify them, and we know that they move in powerful squads. They've hired outside help before, so they may, with their uh, deep pockets that I can only assume that they have, they might have hired even more people with the description of Evening Star saying, you know, if, if you see this person... Yeah, we'll bring her here. So, as you're going through this narrative, 
you start to see another image form, and with each speculation, it gets a little fuzzier, and with each true fact, you see it get a little clearer. So what you end up with is this blurred image of an overview of Natoon, and you see small red points of light moving within it. Um, some of them are in groups of four, some of them are individual, but they're never far from each other. There's more that I can discern about the crooked eye. From what Jackal told Evening Star and what she told us about that interaction, these agents of the crooked eye, they are taken at a very young age and they're brainwashed in a way that only the strongest minds can eventually resist. If I was a Rakshasa and I was brainwashing people, I would make myself the most important figure in their life, someone that they would die and kill for. We're not going to be turning any of these agents very soon. And if my deductions are correct from what uh, we've gleaned about them, they're fanatical. So the image that you get from this as it forms within the magic is the image of a set of eyes and within them you see a genuine lust for battle someone who is willing to kill and die without a second thought my assessment because the eye almost certainly brought in additional troops and they could be in the city right now the best most logical thing to do would be to leave immediately in a covered wagon perhaps leaving a disguised ape behind as a decoy the biggest thing we we have as a priority is to make sure that the crooked eye does not associate our painted wagon with star and barrows if we pass anyone they need to stay inside it until we leave the city So as you look at all of these connecting images, you form a conclusion to it. Inside your mind, you hear a faint voice. Very good. You might be ready. And w when the image is clear, you you kind of have this sense of... I know what to do. So, for the purpose of this, all checks made to escape Natoon will be at advantage for all of you. Nice. Under Seven's guidance. <clears throat> Yay! That a boy. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'll open my eyes, stand up, go outside and go... Right. I think I have a way out of here. We all need to get in the cart. Immediately. And we're trying to we do this, to, uh, we're trying to do this in a sneak a sneakily kind of way, Seven? As much as possible. Can you summon a uh, an ape about evening star's height that I can cast a sky self on? Yeah. Or gig, uh e e yeah, gig is off leaving. selling cut pockets. Yes, I will be back. Yeah. Well, I said I was going to be back in nine minutes. Okay. So how much did I make in nine I can, minutes? Not much. I can see Damn. whatever you need, man. Ah, uh, yeah. It hasn't been nine minutes yet, so I'm going to... Well, uh, DM, has, did that take nine? That took, uh, that took the full ten minutes to do the ritual, prepare everything. Okay. Oh. Uh, DM, did we get Evening Star's sword already? Um, running. Nobody has specifically said that they were going to go get it. Nor has anybody re culminated the money that they... We, everybody said they had money, but we nobody said who they were giving it to or who was going. Yeah, I know it was brought up, but I don't think anyone said I'm doing it now. Shoot. Uh, um, I can, have I can me part and Barros come down yet, or were we still in the room? Have you said you come down yet? We didn't in the chat. So no, didn't. probably not. Okay. Uh, so we're just we're waiting for you guys to come out, and uh, it, as soon as I 
well, yeah, no, I'm I'm going to be looking around. We're out in front of the tavern, right? Uh, yes, the treasure trove. The treasure trove. I uh, want to look around and see if there's anybody looking suspicious watching the entrance. Go ahead and make a perception check. Then again, it's with advantage. As soon as you need some animals, I'm ready with some animals. That's kind of my thing. Excellent. excellent. Why is my thing not rolling? Hang on. Um, you should be able to just use your character sheet. Do do do. Usually I do the the just like exclamation mark roll, but I I think I was using a actually, Discord bot. Give me a second here. I'm gonna uh, fix your character sheet so you can actually roll the way you're supposed to. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and all right there. Now you should have your spell slots correct. And you did it. Yep, yep, there we go. So go ahead and toggle advantage, and then roll. Uh, perception. Yes. Not nice. bad. Hey. So, you're looking around, and you s kind of remember the, uh, give me one second here, you remember the red dots, but you, yeah. and you get the impression that while you can't really see the individual, that there is someone down the street about 100 yards away on the left. They're mm. currently out of line of sight. But you get this yeah. sense that someone is there. Watching us, or just there? You're not sure. You get the impression that they, if they are not currently watching you, they may discover you. Okay. Um, we need to be, and I'll lower my voice towards Bro and Gig. And... I believe Scarlet's with me as well. And I'll say... I can sense... one of the crooked eye... about a hundred yards away. When Evening Star comes out the door... we need to have an illusory copy of her ready to go. In the other direction. Okay. Do you want one, or do you want four? <laughs> More is always better, my friend. Yeah, but I can't do four. Uh, four disguised selves will be. Yeah, different. I could only do three uh, maximum, and disguise self is only a self spell. The only reason I can give it to someone is because I'm giving them an oh. ability on my cog. Right, it's gonna be. Shoot! Can the monkey actually use it's magic? Six, intelli six intelligence knows how to use an item. Excellent. All right. Well, smarter than I gave them credit for. Yes, as long as they mm -hmm. give me my cause back, or I will kill them myself. It's a, good, it's a good thing I didn't summon them yet, or they would have heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad about that as well. But they hear everything uh, I right. do, so... Oh, shit. All right, anyway. You can technically so, still summon four. Have two of them go attack the guy that Seven thinks is worrisome. And then we turn the other two into Scarlet and Barrows and make them... A star and Barrows and have them run through an alleyway. And then run through the town. Running through the town will draw a lot of attention away from us. Meanwhile, we'll sneak out the east gate. And the guy that might see uh, us will be getting attacked by apes. Gar wanders true. out of the. And we'll be in a. Go ahead. Gar wanders out of the door of the tavern. Ah, I throw him into the uh -huh. cart. <laughs> uh, fill in Gar on the plan, and I'll I'll go up into the tavern so I can let Evening Star and Barrows know what's going on. We catch okay. up. Well, I think at that start point, 
Mickey Mouse. At that point, we probably would be on our way down. Yeah, I don't okay. know where I am, so I was waiting for you to lead the way. Yeah. You know, at that sure. point, we would, we would kind of just... I think everybody else is leaving. Let's, let's get going. As I see you guys coming down the stairs, I'll go, ah. I wanted to let you know what the, what the plan is. The two of you are going to stay in the covered wagon while we magically disguise one of Broen's summoned apes as each of you. They will run through the street as I've used magic to detect there are a number of crooked eye within the city on the lookout for you. So, as long as they're causing a fuss, nobody should be looking at just another wagon. There's a million carts, wagons, and tents in the city. And we'll head east while they run up the middle of the road. I understood the last half of that. Well, the first half basically, is basically stay in the wagon. You're going to stay in the wagon. Yeah. Both of you, because Sir Barros, uh, they, they know that there's a paladin of the Raven Queen. So I need you to stay in the wagon and make sure that if for some reason our wagon is made, that she has protection. A last line of it. <laughs> I just did a seven that. for the notebook that I'm going to need to be able to communicate with the rest of the party. Uh, you can <laughs> see Barrow's like visibly like, ah, I want to let me just fight them. I'll hand over my quill and a, a stack of bound parchment to Evening Star. Yeah. I'll say, uh, I know, Barrow's, I know. Uh, this is a situation where discretion is the better part of valor. You're right. You're right. Very well. Never fun being right, but, you know. Very well. We shall follow your lead on this. Um, I will give my big uh, mage's cloak to Evening Star and say, uh, keep the hood up until you get in the wagon. I have my cloak. Remember? Oh, you have a cloak already. Never mind. Yeah, keep, I have my the... cloak that's green side out. The hood's already up. It's rocked tight around me. Right. And uh, as we're coming out the door, I will give the signal to... Bimbley on Bomba Wabe. Four monkeys. Pop out of nowhere. God, I really hope that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, he That's doesn't something. look druish. <laughs> Alright, I, ah! I take the two cogs, I put them one in each of the monkey's hands, then I push it against their chest, and then I look at Bro to tell them to say to do what they gotta do. <clears throat> okay. I will tell them, the two with the cogs, to activate them, and one of you, Larry, you look like you look like Star, and Mo, you look like Barrows. Yes. Okay. And I tell Curly and, uh, gosh, what's the fourth dude? Shemp, Shemp. Shemp, yep, yep. I have them just hang out on, on deck. Okay. So, the... Shemp. They kind of look down <laughs> at the, the little cogs and they squeeze them for a moment. And they do kind of look like Barrows and Star. They... That's all we need. They, like... Barrows has like this big bulbous nose, mm -hmm. and Star right. has these huge eyes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But you know, isn't that close. normal? Yeah, I tell yeah. them they look great. Yeah, no, they look good. <clears throat> you good guys. I mean, so proud. Your best look at them was from a distance. Yeah, they all they have perfect. to do is second guess themselves, and they did their job. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Now, in the seven, do you have any particular direction you want them to go? Because I know you said there's a guy that way, but I can go this way, or this way, or that way. Um, where are we in the town right now? Like, what side North of town? You are in the northeast corner. We're in the northeast corner. Um, we need to leave as... There's no wall, so we can just boot scoot no. down the road. Yes. Yep. We should do that and send our decoys further into town and draw as many crooked eye as are in the town onto their trail as possible. Okay. Waste as much time and manpower as we can. Do you want them to make a scene? Because I can definitely have them do that. 
Do you? Uh, um, we might want Star and Barrows to be able to return to this town in the future, so maybe not a scene. But trust me, the scene will. What if you have your yeah, monkeys chase not... them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so much. Not so much. Uh, oh, yeah. Lou and Larry, more so Curly and Chip. I can have them do some dumb stuff. Absolutely, the dumber the better, and uh, that's that's you know, where I'm at. That's perfect. I can I can make that happen. A little chaos, yeah, never. Okay. Do you want me to kill the man in the alley? If he comes this way, I want you to put a hole the size of a quarter between his eyes. All right. Time is of the essence. You right. do What's see the, the man. <laughs> you see the man that. Uh, <clears throat> Um, Seven noticed does peek around the corner and sees part of what's going on. Sees the uh, the image of Star and Barros, the not Star and not Barros. Does he look shocked from here, this distance? Like, or you no can't read him. him. Got it. But well, uh, he at least sees that they're with do, us. He do sees I recognize them. At... Do I recognize him looking around the corner? You see him look around the corner. I'm going to quickly hide, use the card as cover, and I'm going to pop a uh, blow dart into his forehead. Okay, make it attack roll. Nice. Um, do I stealth first, or...? Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Choom. Here's my blow dart. Why a blow dart? It'll hurt more. It doesn't, though. <laughs> it should so it, Hopefully it's coated in something. Gar, it as you you fire it, you see the man just duck back behind the uh, woo the corner, and it whizzes past. Got it. Rogue knows how to dodge, <laughs> and I'll uh, take my spot in the cart. <laughs> and okay. immediately, the man you you hear this, and that a, is our time absolutely. to leave. Yeah. That way. During all of this, I was already climbing into the okay. cart. What? What are you, you're sending the monkeys where? At the man? Uh, uh southwest. That way, southwest. That okay. Way. So, as soon as you, the monkeys get sent off, you start seeing several people turn, look, and begin to follow, and it's it's creepy watching them move because it's like it's like sharks moving in behind an injured whale. Just this slow, methodical, killing machine pursuing them. All right. Cogs grabbing but the, the man the man who saw Gar and got uh, got shot at is pursuing you guys. Yeah, okay. Mm. Gar, Cogs taking the wheel. Everyone else get in the I'm cart. In the back. And then I'm in the back of the cart. I guess Gar and I are taking pot shots while we're going. I'll be looking out the back. Oh, I'll climb up to the top of the cart, actually, and I'll use my cloak as a uh, cover. Like to hide Good stuff. Shit. Yeah, I'm lying down in the cart with my standout. Okay, give me one moment here. I need to pull up Hero Lab because I've got all these guys on Hero Lab. Ugh. Bro, do you have I did Or is that not did yet? Not expect you guys to uh, try to engage them. Well, we're not sending the monkeys. Has got to be the the no, best thing you... I've read all day. <laughs> <laughs> Send them. Send the monkeys. Where is it? Okay. Thanks for the help of the horse stooge. I never can remember him. Horse, horse. I don't think anyone horse ever does. Yeah. No respect. No respect. No fairness. No one ever remembers him. <laughs> Guy. Okay, so who is mounting up to uh, fire at these guys? Um, like, who is visible on the cart? Um, I guess I would be prone at the door. I'm I looking would, out the back. I would try to be hidden in the cart, but if uh, anybody needs me, I'll stick my head out and take a shot. Okay. Um, so he sees Gig drop down prone in the doorway. Um, he's going to fire a, uh, pull out a heavy crossbow and take a shot. Okay. I'm in the doorway of the cart, like in the little... Yes. Okay. Um, does a 19 hit? Uh, it's disadvantage, I'm prone. Uh, no, it's not. 
Not because you're prone, but because he has advantage already. How does he have advantage? It's one of his abilities. Okay, yeah, that would hit. Okay, so... And... <clears throat> So, 10 points of damage. Okay. And you see him rapidly reload. Alright, what are you guys doing? Are we in comp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the opportunity to reta either retaliate or run. What are you doing? We were running while retaliating. <laughs> yeah, we're, just, we're gonna we're be in the cart. The cart is the moving cart and be, we were going. The cart should be moving while yeah. we... Okay. Some suppressors. Go ahead, uh, who, those who are firing back, go ahead and make your attack rolls. Uh, as soon as all this starts happening, I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna have my monkey twins, my monkey uh, decoys, start running in the direction I already sent them in. Okay. With their monkey, with their monkeys on them. Okay, so you're sending all four monkeys. Yep. Oh, they're, yeah, they're all together. Star has a monkey on, and Barris has a monkey on. Okay. Awesome. Gig, you fire and. It looks like it's going to hit, but you see the guy just kind of duck to the right just a little bit, and it whizzes past. Okay. I'm going to use my minor illusion cantrip to give Gig a illusory barrel for cover, so the guy firing at him can't see him, but he can see the... Okay. Um, he's going to go ahead and make an intelligence save to disbelieve. <laughs> going to be a oh you know what, i'm just gonna roll it in game because that way you guys can see it sure. <clears throat> my save dc is a 15. okay intelligence save that'd be a 26. Oh. holy Ooh. plus eight intelligence save too wow what a what a chance rogues so um, anybody else? Um, as we go past him, because I assume we're going that direction, yes? Uh, he was from the south. Okay, I'm Where going go? to... Northeast. I'm going to pop my head out of the cart, and I'm going to... Um... Shoot him with... My pepper box. Okay. I missed. Yeah, nope. Went wide. Yep, 13 damage to a building. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I'm going to take a heavy crossbow shot at him. Go ahead. 18 to hit. Miss. Again. Can we be rolling with advantage for... No, this is ju those are just for the escape rolls. Gotcha, gotcha. But you are gaining ground on him. He's uh, he's not running after you. He's taking slow, methodical uh, shots. And he is going to fire again. Um, this time at uh, Gar. You said you were firing from the top of the roof? No, I'm in the cart. When I fire, I just duck back down into the cart because... Yeah. Okay. Just trying to picture where everybody's at. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to keep as much cover as possible. Alright, then he is going to go ahead and do you, uh, aim at Gig again. That is a natural 20. Can he cool. see Gig from the... Yeah, I still don't understand why he's not having disadvantage on me being prone. Because of one of his abilities. Because I'm not going to tell you how he's prone. Yes! That's okay. Oh, these guys are empowered with something. We gotta figure out what it is. But we've got the illusionary barrel up. Can he even target? Or did... Oh, no, uh, he he, he, he yeah. stayed yeah, through yeah, it. He rolled a 26 okay. on that. Yeah. yeah this yeah. guy is... And he's elite. obviously a higher level rogue than me because he's able to dodge shit that I'm not able to yet. <laughs> it's okay. We can we can put bro back together. 
bro. Gig, back together after we, uh... 16 points. There's not much putting... There's not much putting. I don't know how you put me back together, but I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> Gig will eventually make us all cyborg. Okay, so... I'm really gonna shoot, but that's gonna be a really bad idea. So, as the card is, uh, is bouncing along, oh, you guys end up uh, taking a... T yes? Matt. Uh, the pepper box, that was a, uh, two at jams. I, I'm sorry, I had to look at my roll. I forgot oh, I had a plus okay. eight. I thought I had a plus six, that's why I didn't think it jammed. Okay. No, it so jammed. <laughs> gotcha. So, you're gonna have to, uh, take the time to repair it, but... At this point, the cart veers off to the right, and out of, uh, you manage to break line of sight with, uh, your pursuer. So, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Uh, my monkeys that are running away. I um, imagine we're still trying to get out are, of here. The monkeys that are running away are being pursued. Uh, they haven't caught up to them yet. Yep, yep. The monkeys that are not decoys, um... So I know this is kind of weird to think about, but... So Seven notices who these people are, and we see the shark swarm, but my monkeys would or would not know that they're being followed right now. They wouldn't have that kind of perception. Okay, that's fine. So then the uh, the two decoy monkeys, I said we're going to start running with the monkeys on their back. And after a little bit of time, probably all about like 15, 20, 30 seconds, I'm going to have the non-decoy monkeys just start making a path of just bullshit behind them. You know, like when you're in a chase scene in the movie and they grab the cart and they like throw it down behind them and they okay. like push people out of the way. And they, that's, that's all. My monkeys are just going to go monkey. Okay. <laughs> So as soon as the ruckus begins, and it, like you notice that the crooked eye split, and they disperse through the various tents and carts, you're not sure where they went because they're no longer uh, following the main road. That, that's uh, fine. I have to, I'm just concentrating on them running and and just breaking shit and causing just whatever kind okay. of chaos they can. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm concentrating on right now. In the right, cart. So you're you're good. So. Uh, I'm going to scribble out a note and hand it to Barrows. It says, if we want to kill him, can we just go back around and run him over? If he was able it's to... not that easy. Yeah. It's not that easy. Okay. So, you've broken line of sight. Are you doing anything? Um, yeah, I'm probably going to spend a action to repair my gun. Okay, I figured that much. Yeah. The rest of you. I'm going to try another minor illusion. Almost like, you know, those Acme walls that oh. look like they lead somewhere? <laughs> okay. It's like this I'm movie where they that. pull the, the carts over the, the road after the car passes through to make it look like it's a dead end. Well, we'll still be going. We'll, we'll turn <laughs> off. I want to break line of sight as much as we can. We'll turn off. But behind us, I want it, it, it to be that unless they spend an action, because that's what that... Uh, my right. illusion is they have to actually take their action to examine it. Right. Uh, I want it to be, if he just gives it a glance, it looks like another empty row. Okay. I want to pull a roadrunner on him. I like it. Um, <laughs> Matt, what, uh, <laughs> what do you want me to uh, roll for the attribute for the Tinkerer's Tools? Uh, dexterity. Dexterity? I succeeded. Okay. So, uh, Seven, you pull up this, uh, this illusion um, of the uh and let's see does he no he wouldn't even think about it he broke line of sight uh so he looks down and sees that the cart is gone and then starts looking among the other carts to see if maybe you've parked somewhere or like hidden within uh yep. the cart somehow i just um, want to waste his time so he he's not checking the illusion yet so you guys yeah, managed to you guys managed to get as much distance between you and him as possible. Um, how, are you guys booking it full speed, like running out of town, or are you guys going at a more normal pace? I figured, well, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, I figured, like, while we could still see them, we were trying to break neck it, but once I see, like, five seconds go by, six seconds go by, my illusion hasn't broken, I'm going to say... Hey, let's let's slow it down and try to blend in with some of the other carts and wagons leaving the town. If there's more, is, is there traffic? I assume there's some traffic. Uh, there's 
not a lot. You do see a couple of wagons are getting ready to leave town. It looks like a caravan is departing. Um, but you can easily find a couple of different routes through the the pathways if you are uh, wanting to go around and maybe go off the main road a bit. I, I would uh, call up to... Gig's driving, right? No. Cog is. Who's, who's dri- Cog? I, I would tap Gig on the shoulder and say... Tell Cog to, you know, drive cash. Oh, okay, you you can tell him, but okay, Cog, slow down. Oh, I thought you were the only. One. Oh. <laughs> no, I you, I told you before that you were able to tell. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, fly cash. <laughs> so we will we will try to look inconspicuous because the only person who really got a good look is still wasting Looking. the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so about this time, bro, you feel your monkeys go. Cool. Awesome. Um, as soon as I feel that, I'm going to do cast pass without a trace on us. Cause I was going to do that anyway. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So I was literally about to ask you how far much of a distance do you feel we've gotten between us and the monkeys? But that's cool. That works for me. Um, so you guys actually do manage to you slow down pass without a trace it's normally would like pull in shadows around you make you less uh like less conspicuous while trying to hide in shadows because you're in bright sunlight instead of using the shadows it kind of gives this haze about the the cart like somebody looks at it and it's just kind of boring and nothing to really nothing really special or look at we're an SCP people. field. We're we're default right now, guys. Default cart. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Somebody else's problem field. So you guys kind of mill into the line with the caravan as they're making their way north and to the east. Did you we want to can. do any Go ahead? I was just about to say, if, if we can stay low profile, make our way out of town, make it look like uh, nothing's terribly wrong, then we can split east and then burn rubber on the on the actual... We joined up with some other cards, kind of making their way the same direction kind of thing? Correct. Mm-hmm. So kind of like uh, Batman 2 with the buses, where the buses, are, we just kind of pull right in there, just pull out with some buses, you guys know what I'm talking Basically. about? Basically. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Mm-hmm. I like it. Dusty bus. Gonna, Dusty bus. At this point, I'm going to actually climb up to the top of the cart and to have a vantage point to keep an eye out of anybody uh, coming up the road behind us. Okay. You don't really see anybody following on foot. You do mm-hmm. see a couple of people form a small group at the edge of town, look off in your direction, and then disperse back into Natim. Okay. I think that might have worked. I'm going to uh, crawl back into the cart then. Okay. Excellent plan there, Seven. I am honestly startled that it worked the way it did. Uh, only a few shots fired. Uh, Gig, yeah. you are right. You yep. took some fire. Yep. I'm good. Yup as in you took some fire, or yup as in you're all right? Both. All right. Let me know if you need uh you need any job. Up. I'm... I'm decent. I'll, I'll nod over a bro when I, I saw what you, uh... What you sent me. Yeah, I'm just I'm just concentrating right. right now. We go from one concentration to another. <laughs> gotcha. Bowen is maintaining a uh, natural veil of shadow around us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we have escaped Natoon with little difficulty, but uh, we should make all haste to Asir in order to evade them. Perhaps in a bigger city it'll be easier too. Well, if they don't know which direction we're headed, we have the advantage. 
uh, we should be able to uh, get a more permanent base of operations where we can stow Young Evening Star away. Uh, shouldn't need too much to uh, disguise her when she goes out. We need more time to be able to plan. Uh, we're really having... Uh, we're on the back foot right now. They're making the power plays. We need to be able to respond from a position of similar power. Speaking of which, I'm going to walk to the front, touch Cog on his shoulder, and be like, look like a normal person, and just cast my life spell into him. <laughs> Who do you want him to look like? Probably uh, somebody that would match the cart. If we have like a default cart, probably like a farmer. Default driver. Yeah. Default driver okay. number two. So, oh, oblivion NPC number one. <laughs> default NPC settings, go. Yeah. So, Cog being a new entity doesn't quite have the foundation of knowledge that you have. So, yeah. the, like the image, that, the, the oh, image no. that you get is essentially a like a, a stretched out version of Browin with the big the big hat and the kind of uh, the the hemp oh, shirt geez. and shorts and you know a little cob pipe. Perfect. I dig it. Yeah, it's adorable. That's great. Amazing. He must be young to think that uh, Browin is normal, but <gasps> Sal. <laughs> Ow! Shots fired, and not from gang! Normal's not necessarily good. I like bro. I know pass without a. I know pass without trace creates shame, but that's dark, man. Shit. Throwing so I did my own constitution saving throw just because that hurt a little bit to see if I made a pass without a trace spell seven. Jesus. What like, for psychic I, damage? I didn't know that uh, wizards could cast cutting. Well, <laughs> it, cut, it cut something. It cut something deep within inside me. So, but I held it. Don't worry. Don't worry, seven. I'll just hold it. It's fine. I'll crit save it. Normal it is just a setting on a magical dishwasher. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take out the two bolts on uh, that are inside of me right now and hand them to Barrows. Ammo. <laughs> okay. I need you to make a dexterity check just to see if you can carefully pull them out. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rip him out, get both pieces, and mend it back together, and hand it to him. <laughs> okay. Did we bring Rodney? He should be catching up. They're not looking okay. for him. Gar looks disgruntled in the back, and he's muttering to himself, "That man dodged my shot. Nobody dodges my shot." No, he dodged my shot too. There's something wrong with him. That was, yeah. There's yeah, yeah. some magic. It Take back five points. As I put my hand on your shoulder and lay out my hands. Thank you, thank you. How much traveling have we done at this point? Um, by yeah. now you've probably traveled an hour at most. I crawl back onto the top of the cart about every hour and I take a look again, just to make sure. Yes, so keep far. That. No, doesn't seem like anybody is pursuing. After a while, I would have asked Eros, do I have to stay in here the whole time? I don't think so. I think maybe in a little while it would be safer, but for right now, just stay in here. Please. Did we take a short rest? Turn around. Go ahead. It's been an hour. Uh, if you've just been riding the cart, yes. That would qualify as a short rest for anyone not concentrating on spells. Yeah. After I will do arcane recovery. recovery. Yeah. After the hour is gone, we're like, all right, guys. Whew. All right, that's about as long as I can hold that up for. Do you, know, do you want me to pop into that again? I mean, I can, but I mean, if not, I'd like to stretch my legs and sit here for an hour. Who's on the rope? Just the other carts? Uh, the other carts split off north towards Tharkat. Yeah, you guys turned east. off east. So far, right, you are so... the only the only cart on the road east. Okay. Um, right. Uh, then we probably should conserve pass without a trace, uh, Rowan. Rest yourself. We could all stand to get a little bit of fresh air. So peek your head out. Uh, get get a little bit of the wind in your face. Refresh yourselves. Get some water. Uh, we're gonna be on the road for a bit. 
Okay. Oh. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Ollie out of the cart so he can stretch his legs and we're gonna walk beside the cart. Even Evening Star <laughs> should probably uh, stretch a bit. She's been wanting to get out of the car. As soon as he says that, I'm out and I've climbed up on top and I'm sitting. Well, I recommend Mark. keeping your uh, hood up, but it uh, would be good to, uh, you know, get some. And a giant eagle swoops in and takes away Evening Star. <laughs> <laughs> and that's game. <laughs> oh, those darn spot. dirty crooked eye eagles. You let, you let your guard down for two seconds. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't. That's how it feels that. to be a parent, honestly. Like you, you give your kid two <laughs> feet of rope, you right. turn around and he's hanged him. Oh, okay. I turn my back for five seconds. All right, cool. No, but, bros um, chilling on Ollie. Bros chilling on Ollie, and we're walking. You guys do what you do what you want to do, but we're chilling. As um, Star is on top of the cart, Barros is going to go up there as well. Okay. I'm going to help Barrows out, because he's wearing full armor trying to climb a cart right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's only only medium armor, so he's actually not as uh, clanky and clunky as you think. That's fair. But there's also no ladder. So. As you guys... Go ahead. Hmm? You need to eat something, little one. I'm going to pull out a pack of simple rations. I'm not hungry. You've been out for a few days. It'll do you good to eat something. Um, I'll take it and I'll just nibble just enough to get him to leave me alone. Sounds about right. As you always did. <clears throat> Eat enough to get me off and of your back. I want to. Start right, making the, my way. What's the plan here, guys? I look at seven. Okay. Um. And I want all of your input on this to make sure that it's not just my delusion leading us. So, we currently have about a month's travel of standard, you know, 16-hour ride to Asir. It's going to take us through some interesting countryside. The things we have to look out for are monster attacks, the crooked eye, and any opportunities we can spot for gold making. Uh, I show a couple of the uh, contract things that were up in Natoon. Mm-hmm. There are people in Asir who will pay decent coin for the hearts of giants, uh, venom glands from venom trolls. Is there anything that if we come across their territory that we should divert for? Uh, let's hear your thoughts, all of you. I mean, if we see any... Uh just like houses in like farmland that's a gold making opportunity i pop him on the head Ah! we're not bandits (laughs) or burglars squints a little bit (laughs) well most of us at least um but if we do decide to go off the beaten path and hunt some things, that uh, firearm of yours will be put to good use. I some of these do seem interesting. Anything stand out? Anybody have any particular knowledge about these creatures? I have a general knowledge, but not anything uh, specialized. I'm not a ra- does anything look familiar to me from my mm, you know about trolls in general J- trolls are kind of common knowledge venom trolls you can kind of deduce what that might mean um, right. the specifics not so much your training is mostly in demons right you curious maybe something that I You've hunted 
you've hunted before. You've hunted for wild yeah. game and whatnot, but not monsters. Monsters are kind right. of new. Wait, so let yeah. me get this straight. They want venom glands from something called a venom... What? What? A venom troll. A venom troll. What if I venom want some venom? What if I want the venom gland? I guess we need to kill more than one troll. Exactly. But there's or one, there might be another. Or you keep it and tell them that you found nothing. But then we don't get money. I'll just side-eye Barrows for a sec. Yeah, I believe there are cheaper poison that you money. can use. Yeah. Of course there are. I think the giants <sighs> would be the safest bet. Because most of us have abilities to stay away. I don't know about the other two. But I'm assuming a giant's just a big human. Giant is a humanoid. I just sang, do you know the Venom Troll? To the tune of Muffin Man. <laughs> get, get Fair enough. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty catchy. It's a pretty catchy tune. <laughs> so, here's my question. Are you guys heading straight east to Penne so that you can head north to Essir? Or are you heading northeast uh, directly. What would be the benefit of going to Penne? Um, a another, city pasta. Penne. A another hey. city in which you can uh, restock supplies. I have or... enough for the month journey. Okay. Well done, Ryan. Which, well done. Which, which road is less traveled? <laughs> Obviously, this one is probably too many cities. The less traveled one is the straight north to S here. Most companies are, uh, re are uh, sorry, most caravans will go straight from town to town so that they can sell their wares. Gotcha. I think maybe we should take the most direct approach, at the same time the approach that's less of a uh, traveled path, so like the in-betweener, not not the roundabout and not the straight across, the, the medium, if that makes sense. The is anyone picking up what I'm putting down there? So mm -hmm. approach Penne from maybe an obtuse angle. I don't know. Okay, just so like, at a second we, we, town. Can, we, we can either go straight there, right, or we can go to Penne and then go up, or we can take like the the medium way. My vote is for like the the wiggly wiggly, like not to directly to Penne, but not a direct route either. I don't. I don't it's think just... searching another town would be smart because what happens if they have people waiting at those towns? Mm -hmm. Because apparently there was enough people at this town over here, apparently, that were able to overwhelm us that fast. So what's saying Once is there's they, not in uh, other towns. Yeah, correct. Once they realize that we're not in the tune any longer, they will expand their search eastward. And with magical means, it's very easy to get word to a seer ahead of us. They might have people waiting in Penne, in a seer, in any of the towns to the west... Likely, there will be Crooked Eye waiting for us wherever we go, so we must stay vigilant, keep Evening Star hidden whenever we get close to civilization. Yes. And DM, DM, you did say, unless I'm making a path up in my mind here, but you did say there was kind of three ways, right? The direct approach, the penne and up approach, or like the not... Well, there there are two main roads. You could find your own path. Um, but there are two main roads. One straight to penne and then up, or one that kind of winds more directly towards S here. <clears throat> and would we be able to at least get some sort of idea on travel time for both of those routes? Like with seven for for uh, going to Penne and up, it's going to be a month and a half. The uh, It's going to be a month for the straight route. Gotcha. So... Shall gotcha. we just go... And making our own way would probably be a month and a half because it's not a path kind of thing. It'd be right. You would be right. finding your way, and it may take even longer depending on complications in the road. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I'm saying this thought process to the group as I'm plugging the DM for thought process. Okay. Um, <laughs> what about uh, Mannerstadt Vale? I'm looking at the map right now to the east of Natoon. Is that a settlement? I see a castle. Do, 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 do. 
open original. Got to zoom in. Cause I... There we go. That's exactly That's what, what I just did is, is a big zoom. That's what I was trying to figure out how to do. Oh, with the open original and all that? So yeah. there, you were going to, you were asking for which? So where are we? Um, I located Natoon, and if yep. we've headed east, then if we dip to the south, there, on the side of the river, there's a castle It says M-A-N-R-W stat. So, like, the, the veil is actually... Welsh, Matterstat. The, the veil itself is actually the forest there. There is a keep that is known there, but it has remained unnamed for many generations. Uh, the name was lost in history. Ah. There's currently no claim on it. I see. Um... Where does the main... I, I see Penne, that's the, the circle to the east, and that's going to take us a month of, of riding, right? Yeah. Correct. I will say that heading straight east was where Tranquil Shadow was. I thought Tranquil Shadow was south where that lone mountain was. It is. Yeah, sorry. Not, uh, south. Yeah, it's south. It's south kind of the southwest. southwest right there. Yeah, yeah, that one. That way. My bad. <laughs> that was right. disintegrating well, rock. Yeah. It's okay. Um, as much as it pains me to say to go towards a city, it might actually be the better Best way to way. Do it if, if Yeah, because if we go the main route... You lose them in a crowd. Well, nah. The choice is yours, and a decision will need to be made soon. Yeah, all right, here's, here's my, my, vote, my vote is to go the least amount of other people around this way, because if there's any kind of fighting that's going to be done, I don't want innocent sure. bystanders to get caught up in it, so that's that's my vote. That's Whatever also, the group thinks is the least, right. the least public way to do it. That's my vote. I like traveling through these countrysides. As much as I understand your point, and I do... I believe that we can use civilization as a shield. These yes. crooked eye types, they have to be secretive. They can't just murder people in cold, you know, blood in broad daylight in highly organized cities. Well, Natoon is an exception because there's no official government in Natoon. But if we were in the midst of an A, a seer, Yeah, but that's assuming that the guards aren't part of this crooked eye. I mean, true, but anybody can be a part of this. Are you saying that they're not going that they're going to follow the rules of the city by not murdering anybody? Not what I was saying at all. I'm saying that we at least have a better shot of if we mustered all of our strength against an equal amount of those people that attacked us in Natoon, they were quite good. Are you sure? Uh, just one that. guy just almost took me out by himself with three of us That's what I'm at saying, is, is one guy almost took out Gig on his lonesome and then came for the rest of us, and it was only through all of our efforts that we escaped. So, if we were to face them in the wilderness, if they caught up to us, and it was just us and them, we would lose. If we had an entire city that we could use as a distraction, a environment to work around like we just did I believe we might be a little bit safer and they would have far more uh, to have to go through to get to us yes but in a crowd someone could sneak up on you in open roads there's nothing to hide by they're just walking towards us well, in a city you can pop out of an alley but we can also hide they say it, I understand your point but it's it's both ways if we are found in the wilderness that's it that's game over if we are found in the city, we have a fighting chance. Well, let's make a decision because we're still going east. <laughs> Either way. If, if you are going... you want to stay in the wilderness, then I will acquiesce. It's, it's, there's no good or bad. There's just, you know, apples and oranges at this point. Well, someone make a decision between apples and oranges because it doesn't sound like anyone's opposed to either one of them. We just need to pick Apples or I oranges? I don't like vegetables. <laughs> Me neither. That's not true. I love vegetables. <laughs> so do we do we head straight for a seer, the the rural route, or do we stop in as many little towns as we can along the way? I've I've already I've already said my vote. My vote is 
the well, the the story of the turtle. You know, slow and steady wins the race. That's my vote. All right, one vote for the wilderness. How about you, Gar? You said wilderness. I like the wilderness. Two votes for wilderness. Gig. Yeah, I'd rather less people seeing us. So wilderness. Three votes for wilderness. Uh, as there are seven of us. Uh, Lady Scarlet is uh, sort of a little bit absent right now. She's uh, not paying attention. Um, she will abstain. Uh, Barros? The less time we spend hunkered down in a single place, the better off we'll be. That keep vote. moving. For the keep wilderness. moving. Yes. For the right. Then that is what we will do. Oh, I wouldn't make Lady Scarlet side with me automatically, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What's that you said, Lady Scarlet? I agree with what Lois Lemon says. Yeah, okay, well, that's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt she'd appreciate me using her like a hand puppet. <laughs> what do you mean? I've been here this whole time. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. All right, the eyes have it. Uh, we will keep to the wilderness, do our best to not be spotted. Besides, you do have a point. This is a big country. Is wilderness still going through Penne and taking the long route, or are we literally just going to book it through? Uh, I think we're own? literally... I think we're literally booking it through. I like it. Through the vale, through the forest, into a seer. I mean, as long mm. as we are able to locate fresh water and food and we'll for ourselves row. and our mounts, uh, which in the wilderness with a druid and a wizard we should be just fine, then I mean, uh, we can we can cut through the northeast. We can. Uh, I, I'm looking on the map between Conway Vale and Spiderweb Vale. There's open fields. We can take a road up that way, uh, take a right through Murthy Forest, and we will be at a seer within. All right. I'm liking, I'm liking it. So we have seven. Seven, you're on GPS duty, right? You're going to tell us, you know, the best path, mark something out, you know, figure out the best concourse of action, you know. Serpentine, right? So they can't really follow us on a direct path. Serpentine us through there, find the best path. If and we want to hit some forests to hide in, there's several on the way. Okay, and then Gig, maybe we could try to figure out some ways to make this card a little bit more uh, off-roady. All we're, I mean, we have a month and a half plus. Okay. I'll go get food. More we got people who can hunt would be stuff. better, I think. I just really like this idea because if I'm the, the crooked eye and stuff, and we're going to go try to find them, you know, they're going to look at one path or the other, but the third option is the the, the, the non-traversed no path. Like, at least it yeah. gives us a little bit of an advantage on it, so... You do have a point. Sending crooked eye scouts just into the wilderness willy-nilly with an impossible-to-predict trajectory would be a waste of their resources. More than likely, they will spend the next month looking for us in Asir and Panay and other places. And they might be off their guard when we finally arrive. Right. And while we're in the wilderness, do we DM on our bounties for the troll venoms and all that stuff? Do we have any kind of like ideas where they are, or where we just handed sheets that says find so them and kill them? The venom trolls were in the spiderweb veil. The Which is all the way. Yep, the chimeras were in the Conway Vale. Um, the which what other ones did you grab? Giant. The giant. Yeah. And uh, the the hill giant wyverns? is. Hmm. Oh, the wyverns. The yes. Wyverns. Um, yeah. The wyverns are actually to the southeast, um, uh, near where that keep is. Uh, and so. the the hill and uh, stone giants are found in the uh, the mountains to the northwest of the Murthy Forest. Then I'll point these out to them and go. So these are the locations, and I'll I'll just sort of show on the map. Sure. If we wanted to um, 
if we wanted to get the Venom Trolls, they would probably be the last thing that we'd pick up, as Spiderweb Vale is the most east of the locations on this map. But, since we're only a few hours out from Natoon, we need to decide whether or not we're going to go uh, break north across the Aran Plains to Conway Vale for the uh, Wyverns, was it, Diem? Uh, no, the Wyverns were south, the Chimera were north. For the Chimera to the north in Conway yeah. Vale, or if we go to the southeast, we'll break for the keep at Manorstadt Vale. Uh, there will be wyverns there, as well as a giant where? The, uh, the giant giants are to the uh, northwest of the Murthy Forest. Northwest of the Murthy Forest. Oh, then we can definitely hit the Venom Trolls, and we can definitely hit the giant. It's fairly close to Asir, actually, so we'll pick up that contract probably close to the end of the month if we make schedule. Alright. I feel like I feel like we're looking at a really big amusement park map. It's like, alright, so if we go down here we can hit It's a Small World, and we'll come back around and hit the Peter Pan <laughs> ride. And if we just go down a little bit further, we'll hit the Haunted Mansion and we're good. Like, we'll just kind of hit these along the way. Like, I love it. I fucking love it. Let's if, do uh, it. The only <laughs> problem is the lines. Mm-hmm. Always the lines. <laughs> oh, that's why you get the fast pass. Yeah, mm -hmm. but and you gotta um, get the app. You gotta get the app that has the wait times on it. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> while we're that's awesome. While we're traveling, um, Gar's going to sit up on the cart looking for like any like game animals, like deer or whatever. Okay. Um, anything that's within like let's say one thousand two hundred feet. So within range, you mean? <laughs> within uh, plug in between the eyes. About point three miles, point two miles. Okay. So <laughs> you you do see a couple of herds of Arok. Um, you see some antelope and some. Uh, you don't really start seeing deer until you get near the uh, the spiderweb veil. Okay. Okay. As we're traveling. Do you guys want a uh, big deer, or do you guys want really big deer? Um, for travel purposes, probably smaller is better. Honestly. I'll take a shot at the antelope. I'll take a okay. shot at the antelope. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and make an attack roll. I won't have you roll damage, because it's going to one-shot it, but at least see if you can. <laughs> okay, yeah. Now, <laughs> who's going to go out and fetch it? <laughs> <laughs> I pointed well, out, like... like how far was it? <laughs> uh, it it was a good, say, two hundred yards. Okay, <laughs> so it's good. the one thing I will say is if we're gonna try to do this at a pace, you know, to to kill stuff and then you know skin it and meat it and everything. I mean that that's a stop. That's that's not you can't yeah. really skin it while we're moving. We already nope. got one. It's it's we're just gonna leave it out. Okay. No, we can we can take it, hang it from the uh, thing, let it bleed out while we go. We can smoke it. Yes, we yeah, should. A blood trail. <clears throat> literally a blood trail. <laughs> literally, why would they assume that we have? It's our blood trail. Well, it could be a trail for it's anyone. It's already done. Let's let's take a short rest. Let's skin and dress it. Leave you know, bury the viscera so it doesn't attract wolves, and then be on our way. But we should probably just eat rations for the next few days to get as much as of a head start in the direction that we're going before we break camp again. I believe we had discussed last night some form of three days on one day off schedule. That works. Yes. Speaking of which, he Leave does have materials happen. for this trip. He did buy stuff. We can make normal food. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to eat like graham crackers the entire trip. That is true. And Seven can flavor your food accordingly to your taste. I bought spices. And and we've got I, literally, I literally have a spell. Yeah, that it makes, I literally have yeah. a spell that makes food. <laughs> yep. Between the three of us, we shall eat well on this trip. Yeah, we don't have to eat graham crackers and, like, gingerbread men. <laughs> Fine. Hard tack like men. No, no lambus bread? But we've got plenty uh, of dessert, too. Well, we've already killed a deer. So unless we want to make a, a gift out of it to the local wolves, we should probably uh, stop momentarily grab it do what we need to we'll take some of the meat and, and then we'll hold on to it and bring it to it and when another cart passes us we'll just hand him a deer and keep going in a few hours we'll need to decide whether or not we're going to be going north or south um dm 
What do I know about the desolation of Angugar? Let me find it on To the, the... north of Conway Vale, which is to the north of Natoon. So if we're close to that and it says the desolation, I want to make sure we're not getting into anything. <laughs> well, if you, you wouldn't be actually going north of it, because if you went that far north, you would be well above us here. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to, to but, make sure so we the, wanted to go really out of our way, that like if we were trying to lose somebody, that we're not like, oh, into the giant death area to lose. I'm thinking it, ahead. It's kind. It's mostly desert, and because it is so far north, it ends up becoming a frozen tundra during the winters. Hence desolation. Gotcha. Um, my personal uh, preference is for us to head southeast. The closest one is the keep at Mount Stamp Vale. Plus, there's a there's a river we can follow. Well, the lake to the east you, of that. I was going to say, the, the river is going to take you way farther south. Yes, it is. Well, there's... Yeah, I guess I guess it will. If we follow... Um... Well, the, the first bit of that river between the mountains looks like a little valley. That'll take us to the actual keep. And then we can head right through the vale and then detour northeast into Spiderweb Vale to pick up a Venom Troll. Okay, Seven, I would like you to go ahead and make an intelligence check. Possibly. Don't screw that up. <laughs> <laughs> intelligence check? Yes, please. And go ahead and make it with advantage. Good. So, you're you're as you're discussing this plan, talking about traveling south, you pick up on something. The riders were only a few days' ride from where Tranquil Village was, or uh, sorry, Tranquil Shadow was. It would stand to reason that traveling south in any manner, especially to an unknown keep, may be a bad idea. You know, a sudden, almost divinely inspired thought has occurred to me, ladies and gentlemen. Yup. Hey, Seven, wouldn't it not be safe if we went to a castle down south that we don't know about? Huh. I was about to say my thought, which was that we should have venison for dinner, but that's a really good thought. <laughs> oh, it I just like came that to me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. I, that, can you imagine if we had ridden south and then all of us died? That would be terrible. <laughs> I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what Gig said. We should probably go north. Let's go fight some big humanoids. Yeah, let's, uh... I know all their vitals. There's a Chimera contract, and then we can make our way east into the Spiderweb Vale, pick up a Venom Troll... The Giants will be in the Marathi Forest, which is to the northeast of there, and from that point, it's maybe a week to Asir. Okay. Alright. Okay. So, so, stretch your legs now. Uh, while we're preparing the deer, we should probably stop, dress it, get it ready, get it salted, preserved, everything that we can for the journey ahead, and uh, savor these last few moments of relaxation, as it will be our rather rough three-day ride before we rest. Yeah, so Are I'm we gonna... next to a body of water? Uh, no, there is no current, no body of water nearby. Shame, Gar's favorite food is fish. Okay. <laughs> uh, looking at the map, Gar, once, we re once we reach the Vale, there will be an opportunity to... Mm -hmm. So, Gig's gonna just chop the deer until bag-fitting size, put some salt okay. on it, and then just put the pieces into the bag. Okay, if you'll remember, um, the bag of holding does have preservative properties, mm -hmm. yeah. so you'll not have to worry about it, it rotting. It's marinating. Oh, I see. Okay. It's like a Himalayan... Uh, it, won't, yeah. it, 
won't actually do that either. It will go in kind of a stasis. We don't know so. that yet, so it's giving it a try. Okay, <laughs> you can make the attempt. But yeah, this has been meriting for 12 years. It comes out and it's exactly the same. <laughs> So yeah. the leg that gig forgot. Oh, I do. Let me. I actually have to Damn, write that in my no, thing. There's no air in a pocket dimension, isn't there? Damn. Yeah, you. Uh, it's back. <laughs> it's ten minutes. So when we get the deer, does anything go into my cookbook, or I have to find a cookbook that has cooking stuff that's cookable, and then put you it have, in the book? That was a lot you have of to make something. Sentence. Okay. So when you so if you do a recipe from another book, mm. your book will record it because you're cooking using that recipe if you make up a recipe on your own it will record that recipe because you are cooking oh yeah no we're having deer kebabs that's definitely happening okay well we're gonna get to level 20 we're gonna be like look at all this gig does your inventory sheet say deer meat (laughs) well my inventory already is just ridiculous there's rib rub there's hag pots there's sound gems there's a spoon i'm sorry just a spoon um, cookbook and deer parts. And then a bunch of tools. It's crazy. Just well, some... at least we, we shall lack for nothing when it comes time to, uh... Flavor. To scavenger. <laughs> hmm. uh, Alright, so uh, are we heading towards the bounty? Is that what we're yeah, doing? Yeah. Yep, uh, we yeah. should head north. Broan, do you have Watch. any, uh... Do you have any plants that let off a lot of, like, smoke when they're burned? Do you have anything in mind? Um, I'm making smoke grenades. So I just need a plant that burns. That makes off a lot of smoke. So I pretty much need you to put a vape inside of a grenade for me. What? What would happen if uh, you made a uh, smoke grenade, whatever you call this thing? It would just make a Uh, large area of smoke. No. Let me finish, tree. Nope. Nope. (laughs) I will hang you outside this window. Nah. As we gallop at a slow pace. What would happen if they, uh, let's say it was one of those, uh, funny herbs? Oh. I pull him back in from the window. During, like, combat, <laughs> what would that do to our enemies? And I put my claws together. <laughs> Fairly certain that's a war crime, but I am intrigued. Please, bro, and answer the question. If you can find it in writing, well, I'll burn it, and then it didn't exist. <laughs> I said I, mean, I was interested. I mean, if you're trying to you're trying to capture smoke, I mean, we could try to, if we stop somewhere, maybe burn some leaves, some some dry leaves. Well, I was maybe. gonna put I, mean, I was gonna put your herbs that you were gonna give us into a grenade capsule that has a little bit of gunpowder to f- light the herbs really fast. And then if it get, if it makes somebody fall down laughing, that's just a bonus. I mean, we could do it. I could, I could take some. I could take some of this stuff, and I'll just do my regular my regular druid craft weed. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I mean, if you really dry the hell out of this stuff, I mean, maybe this this might work for what you're trying to do. Okay, we'll give it a try. We'll try it with one. Tasha's, Tasha's hideous um, laughter in a can. <laughs> yeah. Try to. I mean, uh, maybe maybe a, a mini version of it. So I'll I'll druid craft up some of my my regular stuff. And then we're going to have to let this dry for a little bit, but it's not like we don't have time. Yeah. We have a lot of time on our hands for the next, well, few weeks, honestly. It's going to take us probably, what, DM, a week to get to the north? To the... Um, roughly. Um, take us about a week to do that. Uh, in the meantime, we should probably come up with a few plans for, like, what if in the next five minutes we look... And behind us, we see a group of riders coming towards I us. I point at the keg at the plan, bottom please. of the cart. I already thought of that one. You? Yeah, oh. it's full of cow traps. Uh, then, excellent. Because if we can't hit the people, we can at least stop their horses. Unless their horses are magical, then I'm calling baloney, because that's ridiculous. Magical <laughs> I mean, horses. Magical horses. I can do a magical horse. <laughs> that No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Starts welding up the hole for the care of the thing. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Forget no, no, it. it's it was an amazing thought, and 
we we very much appreciate it. That's probably an excellent idea. But I'm I'm saying like we need to have defense strategies in place for you know think of the worst that can happen and plan. For All right. So, I mean, how long do we know? How long time wise it's going to take from where we are currently to get to the first X on our map? To roughly a week. Yes, roughly a week. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, um, during the first night, those of you who managed to find sleep, because uh, you will have to stop for at least an eight-hour rest to uh, recover. Unless you are traveling 24 hours, at which point exhaustion will set in quickly. But if you are stopping for a rest, um, those of you that find sleep, Star, you get a vision of dun, dun. Tranquil Shadow. You wake up, and around you is Ash. To your right, Blaze Barrows. You look to your left, and you see the spectral form of your mother, standing in the doorway of one of the burned-down huts. As you approach, you feel yourself compelled to walk inside. And you see the spot where she's standing looks disturbed. You crouch down, you clear away ash and dirt, and dig deeper, deeper. And you find a small box buried in the middle of this hut. As you go to open it, the reversed hand of a Rakshasa reaches out for you, and you snap awake. So I wake up panting, cold sweat, and I, mean, right? I like we're, assume we've got like a camp set up to the side of the cart, so I'm going to climb up on the cart. Was she like uh, yeah. rocking around in her sleep or her nightmare? She was dead still. Okay. So the she... only th you do notice when she sits up gasping. Okay, so Cog and I will stop making bullets and just look at her and be like, "Star, are you okay?" I don't even look. I just go up on the cart. Take that as a yes. Okay, goes back to making bullets. <laughs> okay. Seven. Yes, sir. When you find rest, you find okay. yourself back in the library. Oh, hello again. It's a different section this time. You're not quite sure where you are. None of the books look familiar. Okay, I will take a look at some of the names on the spot. You don't find any names. They look to be... Almost written in code on the spines. It's familiar to you. In that the it's what spellcasters will use to encode their spells. It, is this is each of these books a spell? I'll you, uh go, go ahead. No, tell me what you're doing. I was just about to say I will select one from the shelf. Maybe, uh... Do they have different colored book bindings, or are they all the same? They look generally the same. They're, they're various colors of bound leather. There's some blues, some uh, some blacks that look like gold filigree in them. Uh, there's plain brown. Uh, there's a couple of red tones. A few green. I will grab one of the black ones with gold filigree and flip through it, see if I recognize what's in. So you open the spell, the the spell book, and you can see some of the symbols are familiar to spells that you know, especially near the beginning of the book. 
but you're not quite able to translate this. This is heavily encoded. Apparently, the wizard who uh, gathered these spells wanted to be the only one to read them. Uh, Order. The penmanship is remarkable. Like, the whoever did it had a, a flair for style. And they seemed to take great pride in the inscriptions of their books. I will look down. Is my spell book in the little holster where I usually keep it at my side? Your normal spell book is gone. Ah. Uh, interesting. I will select a red bound book and read this one. What does it say? Okay. Um, the, you can't translate the coding. Like the like you open it up and this one seems a harsher hand. Sloppy and almost like whoever was writing it thought that they uh, they didn't really need it or just needed cliff notes. They didn't really care about the details of the spell work. Um, Brute force that, wizardry. I'm going to just try and take it all in and, and see how far does these bookshelves stretch. The shelves themselves seem to almost circle around you. you. As you follow it, you're looking around and behind you, you see an old woman standing with a lantern. And she smiles up at you. I see you've come back. I have. And I brought a name with me. Oh, did you? You're a hard one to track down, Ayun, the knowing mistress. Yes, and I know a great many secrets, too, Seven. <clears throat> Can't know that many if you're calling me seven. But anyway, what can I do for you? For starters, you can put my books back. Of course. And I'll put the two that I had back on the shelf. Turn around and just give her a little bit of an odd look. Not quite sure why, why we're having this meeting. We've been watching you for a while, and we know of your ambition. Ah. That's... unnerving, gonna be honest. Yes, it is for us as well, because we know your intent. Not quite sure you get to be outraged. If I was outraged, you wouldn't be here right now. True, you're being mis marvelously reasonable about this. Why have I not been, I don't know, uh, disintegrated? Smote beyond your wildest imaginings? Well, something to that tune. It's because Why we see potential here? in here. Ah. Potential. Potential. Well, you're not the first, so go on. I'm, I'm listening. For now, you still have much to learn. But it won't be from me. And until you are willing to take on the mantle of the true name, it won't be for a while. And I she got passes, to this. She passes <laughs> her hand in front of you, and you snap awake. I... <laughs> grumble, grumble. <laughs> Did I wake up first? You woke up first. Fine. But I'm peeking over the edge of the cart just to watch the hand. God damn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm r rubbing my head going, I'm sorry, evening started. I wake you up. No. May I, may I join you? 
how well can you climb? Uh, I levitate up <laughs> to her level. Just okay. Yeah. Easy enough. <laughs> uh, you get to a certain point where climbing is a bit uh, blasé. Cheater. That's all wizardry is, really, is cheating. Shoot him down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll sit on the edge and go. <sighs> you know, you never were one for lectures on wizardry. We would talk for hours sometimes. I would ramble on about the nature of magic, and any time you got bored, you'd get to ask me any question that you liked. Because they were always... Rather frivolous. You know, who do you like? And, uh, you know, things like, do you want to kiss Lady Scarlet? Things like that. Which you did. Continues making bullets. <laughs> Thank you, Gig. <laughs> Very helpful. And I'm writing all of this down in the notebook to communicate since you can't read my lips. Um, and I said, yep, Scarlet mentioned that. You were really rooting for us, you know. I don't know. Ah, well. Terrible turn of phrase. Um. I know this is... This must be difficult for you to not have your identity. And I want to let you know that I sympathize. I just kind of give him a look like... You really have no idea. I'd like to give her a look back as much as I can that says, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'll just open my mouth and say, if you could have your memories restored, not mm -hmm. saying I can, but I can certainly work on it with you, would you want to be somebody else? Somebody that we all know and have good memories with? Or would you want to strike out anew? Of a rare opportunity. Even, I can't even begin to think of that because I don't know what that was. Not a fair and question, I know. It's not just the memories that are gone. It's There's a hole in me that I don't know what it was, but a huge chunk of me. How would you like it if your magic was gone along with all of your memories? Not much at all, I'm afraid. That's what this is. I dare say I don't know what it's like to have worked hard for something and to have it stripped away from you. That would be terrifying. And I'm very sorry you're going through that. I can tell you a little bit about what you were like, though. You were very good-natured, very curious, always a kind word. Borderline naive, but you're growing, you're young. You're a very good person. Yeah, it's good to know. And I've known few, so you stand out. Stand out because you've only known a few good people, or stand out because I'm one of the better good people? To truly desire the best for everyone is something rare. The first time we got into a fight, you were so loath to pick up the sling and do violence that you decided from there on out that you would do your best to not hurt anybody, to subdue and not to kill. I'm the same way with my magic. I subdue people. I don't kill them. I don't use magic as a weapon. I use it as a tool of creation. You were the same. The others... They have their swords and their guns and things that are necessary. But I, I saw a kindred soul in you. You're in you're in a place that I'm at, which is one of uh, trying to avoid inflicting more harm into the world. What if I'm not really star anymore? It's 
good question. If you're not star anymore, then it's very possible that you can be someone even better. For all her virtues, she was also woefully naive and didn't have much of a uh, head for higher learning. You have a rare chance to decide exactly the sort of person you're going to be. But I hope that as you do that, that you retain the core of goodness that Evening Star had. Thank you. Of course. And you have a lot of people here that care about you very much. None more than Sir Barrows. <clears throat> Seen him charge things twice my size just to make sure that they didn't eat you. Yeah, he seems like a good guy. Hey, ask him about uh, this one time that uh, there were some undead outside of a village, and he went ballistic, and his sword was all glowy, and I think it'll really make his day if you ask him about that. You said you were going to let me read your journal. Ah, yes. Um, I'll pull it out and hand it to her. I only write in the darn thing. I haven't even read it in oh, a month or two since I started keeping it. I hate my own handwriting. So. I'm already <laughs> flipping through it and noticing the doodles and the hearts and the uh, cursive, and I'm like, um... And I show him one of the pages that Scarlet doodled all over. What? That's not my... Oh. Oh my. Scarlet, your boss is here. <laughs> I... Today is a day for... Violent revelations of knowledge. Anyway, um, <laughs> you have a nice read. I can't guarantee that everything you read in there will be uh, strictly academic. Uh, and any time you want to try and exercise your mental powers, let me know. I'll be more than happy to put them to the test. Even if it's asleep, there's power in you. Do you mean lessons or... Trying to get my telepathy and stuff going again. I suspect it would be one and the same for you. You see, the the magic we were studying together that you possess within you, it's well, it's it's tied to the mind, to how you're thinking and feeling. So I, I suspect that the more of a connection you have with that power, and it's just a theory, but the more you are memories in yourself will start to align as well. I don't think you're not Evening Star anymore. I just think you're out of order. The more in order you are, the more you'll start to feel like yourself again. Hopefully it'll be a, a safe place that we're at when that happens. Mm, why safe? Why does it matter where it happens? And I'll look her dead in the eye and, and say, well, you deserve honesty. I suspect that the reason that the Crooked Eye is having such a hard time finding us is that divination isn't working on you right now. Mm -hmm. See, scrying magic, it seeks out the soul, the essence of the person that they're trying to find. As long as your memories are all mixed up, you're not the same person you were. As soon as that's fixed, it might be able to find you easier. So we need to be in a position of strength when that happens. And that'll be the city, Isir. Isir is the magical capital of the entire continent. If there's anywhere that we can make progress towards restoring you, it's there. Okay. If we do the lessons, do I still get a ask you questions if you get boring <laughs> when I get boring apparently and we shook on it even if you don't remember it so the agreement stands okay trying to get some sleep okay. and I will float back down crawl back into my bunk and shoot a glare at Scarlet's snoring form before and turning back. 
and I'll sleep on top of the cart. Seven, don't go to sleep angry. It's not not angry, just disappointed. Oh, okay. oh that's even worse. <laughs> so, as you guys climb back into the cart, it's a couple hours till dawn. Coffee! Um. <laughs> Okay. Um, you guys are just beginning to wake up. I would like everybody to make perception checks. Lovely. Oops, it's not with advantage. I'll take the 19, though. 24 natural. 17. Bro, when that was persuasion anyway, you should probably roll again. Um, oh, he tried to persuade his eyes. He's still waking up. He hasn't a coffee yet. Hey, He's persuading go. himself to Come get on, up eyes. out of bed. Come on, eyes. Wake up. You can do it. You're wide okay. awake, but you're spouting. So, all of you here off in the distance tink 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 this loud clanking sound I immediately hide in the car I start laughing <laughs> oh oh god what's happening took him long I enough. hide on the far side of the cart but not in the cart and just kind of around <clears throat> yeah I'm going so, to oh, the god, west the cart as well. to the west you see a dust cloud kind of forming behind what looks to be a giant spider oh, running Lord. at full speed towards you guys. Giant metal spider? Mm -hmm. As it gets closer, you can you see the the joints and everything are moving a little bit less naturally than a normal spider, but you also see the bright hair of Rodney. Rodney? <laughs> Gig, I turned to Gig. Did, did you know he would be following us? I uh, thought he was yeah. going to meet us. No, uh, he was going to walk with us, but we kind of left in a rush, so I was hoping my loud shot gave him a warning, and apparently it did. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm glad we went wilderness then, because that would be hard to cover up in a city. Yes, it would. Wave at him. So I as... this was a boss fight car. It was like a giant metal spider in the middle of nowhere. This is going to be... Let's do it. Let's do it. Damn, ready. <laughs> so, as Rodney gets closer, he slows down. And, you, like, you can see the spider lock all eight legs and kind of skid to a halt. Well, you guys, uh... Definitely left in a bit of a hurry. I couldn't even catch up for a... Well, till now... Yeah, stuff happened. Sorry about I that, heard. assassin. Yeah, yeah, uh... <laughs> I, I had a bit of a surprise for them. What did you now? Uh, oh. Well, I was thinking... If they were going to be chasing you, and they were going to uh, probably be tracking you, I'd, uh... Scramble them a little bit. Oh. And he kind of uh, <clears throat> hops out, climbs under the the spider, and opens up this little hatch. Looks almost like a Bombay door in the bottom of the spider. And he kind of rummages around for a little bit, and pulls out this kind of... It looks like a circle woven of copper wires... Um, and you can see various gemstones are socketed in it. Um, <coughs> and he kind of just pulls it up and wiggles it. This little baby will, dis uh, will disrupt divination anywhere within uh, probably 300 feet. Oh, really? That's a little bit useful. I'm certainly... I'm Seven's, like, beaming. Now, there's certain kinds that, uh, well, if they get your blood, I kind of screwed, but 
I mean, this will do it. I look to Barrows like, did they get any of my blood? Fine. <sighs> Well, glad to see you made it, cuz. Well, I couldn't... Yes, uh, you're... I, uh, couldn't let you look for me uncle alone. Yeah. Well, we're finally gonna go beat up some bigger humanoids called giants. Do some work well, before we get to Azir. Azir? Chimera's first. Oh, but, uh, We are on our way to Azir. Well, I mean, I've got some tricks, but I, I'm not much of a fighter. It, if you guys want to do that, you can go ahead. I'll watch the cart. That'll work. That's fair. That definitely works. <clears throat> but right. what is this? I, I'm looking over at the, the giant metal spider. Is this what you were working on back in the tomb? Oh, yes. Finally finished it. Got the uh, crystal upgraded on it. Got it. Was able to make upgrade it, make it about twice as fast. It's fascinating he, craftsmanship. He uh, kind of scrambles up, pulls a lever, and you see the spider spin around, uh, pick up its uh, body a little bit, and then fire a net out of its backside. That is impressive. Gig helped me with that one. Gig has an excellent eye for uh, crowd control, and I just sort of tap the underside of the carriage. Yeah, yeah, I learned that from bro spiders. They shot stuff out of their butt, so I thought this one should too. Butt shooters. It's a technical term. It's a butt shooter. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the, the biological property. No, I just made it up. Yeah, no, I just made that up. I don't know if that's really what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> can confirm. But I can neither can... confirm nor deny that's the actual technical term. <laughs> but she's got some other surprises, but uh, they wouldn't be surprises if I showed them all. <laughs> I'll hand him a cup of coffee. And he yep. downs it in one chug, and you see he almost like starts vibrating. Woo! What is this? <laughs> Uh, oh dear. Uh, it's Bro's coffee. Coffee? Coffee. Mm -hmm. I like coffee. <laughs> coffee. Right, coffee the best. <laughs> he goes <laughs> zipping up to, to the spider and immediately starts tinkering with it. You have no idea what he's doing, but he's doing something. I'll bring you fixer. Out. Okay. We okay! <laughs> no fuel. It's no fuel, man. Yep. Never, never give gnomes coffee. What are you thinking? I was just about to say that seems a bad idea, but you know what? Energizer bunny it is. Just keep go, go, going go. and going and going. All right, so let's head out. I'll make breakfast on the go. Heading okay. out, we shall. Come Although, uh, Sir, Sir Barros, I would like to uh, to ask mm -hmm. you a few questions when we're on the road. Uh, of course. <laughs> Did you? Oh. As in mind, Simon. Um, I'm not the expert on gods and, and things like that. And while Lady Scarlet is catching up on her morning beauty sleep, tell me about the Raven Queen. I know we'd had a brief conversation about her before, but... um, A while ago, yes. Is it true that she was once mortal? Yes, it is. You wouldn't happen to know anything about the circumstances of her uh, ascension, would you? I've been having I'm... odd dreams as of late. I certainly hope not to become a god. That would be absurd. But I know, I know a little bit of it. I'll do tell. It'll help pass the time. Uh, perhaps we'll begin to explain the ascension 
of Raven okay. Queen, as I'm sure. What little, what little you know? What little, yeah, what little Barrows would know of that? Because the 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 method of her ascension is not known well, to no. anyone. Yeah, it's not known to anyone, as far as anyone knows. Um, what is rumored is that she got her divinity from Neru and killing him. Um, how she managed it and the method of transference, nobody knows. Well, but, it's <clears throat> interesting to think about. It does you two questions, I'm sure, but the answers I do not have. Well, no worries. I, I have odd dreams again of late that uh, gods, they plague me. No offense, of course. And Barros will look at Star as they're walking, and I want to look back at Seven. You're not so bad after all. You should think on that. After all. They have their uses. After all, the Queen brought her back for us, didn't she? She did. And I have absolutely nothing against your queen. So, they do have their uses occasionally. And I'll give them a, a nice smile and go back to the cart. Okay. So, you guys get well into your second day's ride. Um, and to the northwest of the road, you do see a small village. However, you see what looks to be smoke rising from it. Not chimney smoke. This is thick, black smoke. Uh, I will snap and put Dewey on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And to the others, I'll say, I think my familiar should get a better look at the surroundings. Okay. I'm going to go and put my hand... Is everyone else all seeing that? We're all seeing black yes. smoke right now? Yeah. When Seven says that, I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder so he knows he's okay. And my <laughs> eyes will go white as the magic uh, I'm seeing through Dewey. I'll point at the village and say, circle around, see what's causing all that smoke. Okay. Is there anybody else doing something in this time? I'm waiting for Seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... To answer your question, bro, you are about half a mile away. All right, cool. Um, seven. Dewey flies, and being a sparrow, it takes him a little bit, but as you get this elevated view, you can see there are uh, three buildings on fire. Um, you can see large shapes moving through the, uh, the buildings, well, kind of between them, running. They're fast. Faster than something like that should move. They look almost ape-like, with long, bulky arms and short legs, and they're hunched as they run. And they're running on all fours. Um, you catch a glimpse of kind of greenish-yellow skin before they take off into the woods and head up towards the, uh, the uh, mountains to the north. So you, uh, right now, where you're seeing this is about uh, halfway between Natoon and the Conwe uh, Conwe Vale. Mm -hmm. So those those two long mountains there, you see, uh, is where that this village lies, and about where your uh, you and heading up towards into those hills is where these figures have gone, and they quickly pass out from Dewey's line of sight because of the trees. And I will relay all this as I see it to the others. And, you know, bringing my consciousness back to my body, I'll say, I don't think there are many more in the actual town. I could be wrong, so keep your guard up. But if we want to assist in putting out the fires and do our good deed for the day, I believe we can do that. Well, come on. Let's get going. We may need help. Might as well help them over here. Okay. Yeah. So, you guys, with all haste, head into the town. You see 
now as the um, as you get closer, the center of town has a large stone wall built around uh, almost like a fortress built around it. It's small, like there is only maybe twenty foot to a side. But the walls are high, and the inner building is tall. As you approach, you see people coming in through, or coming out through these large doors in the, um, in the uh, in the main wall there. And you can see that they're they're coming out prepared, not only for a fight, but with water buckets, things like that, to be able to put out the fires. Um, they see you, like. They recognize that you're not one of the creatures and immediately go to work. I'm going to uh, jump out of the cart, grab one of them, and just be like, what do you need? And they they stop for a moment. I need you to let me go so I can put out that fire. Grab a bucket if you want to help. Go grab one. I'm going to go grab a bucket and help then. Oh. Okay, so you're, you kind of get into the fire brigade. They're passing buckets. Um, anybody else doing anything? Um, oh. what buildings around here are not on fire? <laughs> exactly. Um, sure. there are, so there's three buildings to the northeast, um, where, th towards the direction where the, the large creatures ran off. Um, the buildings to the southwest are the ones that have been untouched so far. How many people are out here trying to put out these fires? It looks to be anywhere between 20 to 30 of them. I'm going to sneak off to an untouched building. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and make a stealth check. Alright, once we, once we get up there, um, uh, can we see them pulling water from like a well or anything? Or is what, what's going on here? Uh, you can't really see the well that they're pulling from. It looks to be that whatever well is uh, they're pulling from is behind the stone wall. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna go my way, make my way back there, and once I get back there, I'm going to conjure animals for apes, and I'm going to wild shape myself into an ape. So there's now five apes standing here at this well, just like just doing okay. that. So someone gives me a bucket. All four of my stooges and myself, five stooges. Okay, so you add five more to the uh, the fire brigade, monkey fire brigade. Um, monkey brigade. Yep. Start uh, calling themselves monkey business. <laughs> I've actually been keeping this as a attack or a rather a a battlefield control spell. But DM would sleet storm work until the spell ends freezing rain and sleet fall in a 20 foot cylinder with a 40 foot radius centered on a point i choose the area is heavily obscured and exposed flames are doused that would work just bludgeon right. the shit out of so, these flames yeah well, i thought yeah. about this too, but i didn't know if it was going to do damage or not <laughs> it, it doesn't actually do damage which is why i chose it it just makes it rough terrain and people entering the area might slip uh, but it's a battlefield control spell, which is why I love it. So you'll see Seven uh, take a pinch of dust uh, and throw it into the air, whip his wand around, and as he points at the sky, a dark cloud will form over one of the buildings and just freezing rain falls from it. Okay, so as this happens, you see like all the people who were uh, running towards the building stop and then immediately scatter backwards. Yeah, stay out of the way of this one. Go work on one of the other ones while I put this one out. Okay, so... you Between all of you, everybody working together, you managed to get the, the buildings put out. As soon as the buildings are, are put out, everybody seems to just go back to their, their homes like this was a normal thing. However, one older gentleman comes up to you and is like thank you so much for helping our people we've been getting raided by these creatures for weeks now what are we didn't know what to do of these creatures. so many questions all at once 
I believe all have the same question, though. We don't know what they are. They look like goblins, but not goblins. They're too large and too bulky. They're not trolls. Well, they're not trolls, and they're not hobgoblins. We've dealt with those before. Whatever these are, they're... I don't know. They're just worse. I mean, there's only so many goblinoids. There's goblins, hobgoblins, bugbears, um, trolls, and they're none of these. You know, Maybe they're a mix. And um, about with... this time, mm -hmm. you hear a call from one of the bu uh, the buildings that had fallen in on itself in the fire. And you hear somebody shout, We got something! And as they, as they say that, you see a part of the building fall away, and you see this large black shape, like one of the creatures got trapped in the building. I'm gonna, yeah, we're going up to that thing. Let's go take a look at that, yeah. Okay. CSI so, Galay. <laughs> so, this thing is charred on the uh, like most of its skin is gone as far as it uh of as coloration and whatnot it's all black however what you can see from it is it while it's goblin in shape it's it is a it is a large creature it's almost the size of a troll however the head looks like a goblin except it's got a very pronounced forehead and a kind of a, a uh, extended lower jaw it looks almost like a Neanderthal goblin. And it is huge. Oh, and it... boy. Uh, that's interesting. Did uh, did any of these townspeople identify this creature as, like, it's one of them? Is that what they said? That's it. Uh, they, yeah, they basically, uh, when they said they found something, you know, well, we've got one. And it's moving? And no. It's it's been crushed and killed by the building. Gotcha. Okay. I just had a sick uh, secondary question of um just a quick look about um have we seen any of the creatures like come back at all or is it coast is clear kind of thing right now? So far the coast is clear. It looks like any all of the remainders ran back up the hill. Alright. I'm just gonna have my four monkey dudes climb some buildings and just kinda keep a lookout into the woods. Okay. Good thinking. Just a little, little monkey gargoyle up there. <laughs> Just, they're going like this. Okay. Not that, it, not, that, not that that does anything, but they think it does. Right. <laughs> so the, the village leader comes up to you. Well, at least there's one less of them. That is a very interesting. Well, you haven't had to fight one. No, but if it means protecting your village, you very well may have to. Well, it seems like every week, like clockwork, they come in and raid our village. They don't take anything. They just smash things up, start a fire, do some damage, and then run away. Do you, know, I mean, do you have an idea as to where these creatures came from? Well, we've had some men go out into the woods. They sometimes come back. The ones that go up to the mountain usually have stories. Um, we don't know exactly where they're hiding. Is there any of the men who survived coming back? They're still here. And we've had two, usually our best. Unfortunately, they didn't come up with any sort of definitive location. We just know that they... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say any information that they had is better than what we currently have. No information. Um, they use the old deer, deer trails. It seems that... Whatever they are, they're hunters. 
is there some form of intelligence? It would appear so. Do I see any signs that say, like, what the name of the town is? Do we see that? No, there's no, like, welcome to Bowbrook or anything like that. Um, but you could ask. Gig was about to say something. What were you about? Hmm? I don't remember. Oh, uh, you're good. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll try and flag somebody down and go, I'm sorry, I pull out my map. Uh, what's the name of this town? It's Pinefield. And uh, I'll just scribble. I'm, I'm taking notes in my map and journal. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Thank you, bro. Um, sounds more like a territory kind of thing. They're trying mm -hmm. to get land. Your town's in their land. Which is yours first, but I don't think they see it that way. I mean, it's possible. We've been here for several generations i can't imagine that unless they got moved or possibly driven into our la our territory that is possible but what would drive out a creature like that though i have no idea i just hope it never comes here Can I, uh, can well, I walk over what time is it? look at this dead body while we're all talking? No, sure. Gonna go all CSI on? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna smoke my pipe. You know how, like, in the in the shows they usually pull out sunglasses? That's, like, their cool thing? Mm -hmm. Mine's like... Then, Pulling a Sherlock no. Oh, you! Woo, woo, woo. I have my own theme music and everything. It's great. Got the who, right, yeah, I'm gonna do... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so, going to go over and just kind of kneel next to this thing and start looking it over. Okay. What are you trying to deduce? I mean, for the most part, like, what the fuck it is? Because, I mean, from the description so far, it's not ringing any bell in bro's mind of a category class here. So just... No, it's definitely... It's maybe definitely goblinoid. Features? It's goblinoid. All right. All right. Um, you are a nature boy. Rick Flair. Woo. So you, if you want, you can go ahead and roll like, <laughs> medicine check if you're trying to discern anatomy, or nature check if you're trying to discern like what classification of. I was going more classification. Yeah, not not so much like opening it up, looking at its rib cages, you know, seeing okay, how many hearts. Okay, so it is, different thing. go ahead and roll a nature check. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully, that says nature. How's it? Okay. You see nothing. So, nature boy strikes again. <laughs> what you can, what you can gather from this is that while it definitely looks like a goblin, it looks like an ancient ancestor of a goblin, like something from ages gone by. Um, a Proto goblin, if you will, Ooh. and it's like <clears throat> it, it's almost like this was the creature that goblins, bugbear, or uh, sorry, hobgoblins and trolls all diverged from. Each one, each race, kind of specializing in a certain thing. This has the traits of all of them. And you said it was considerably larger than a goblin, yeah? It's a large creature, so it's even larger than a human. Got it. Alright, um... So I'll just say to the group while I'm giving it a once-over, just kind of like smoking my pipe, having an epiphany while I'm... <coughs> while I'm smoking in my herbs. Um, so, I really don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of getting whiff of... No, let's just weave. Hold on. I whiff my hands. No, I'm kind of getting a whiff here that this thing, this creature, 
is almost like um, how do I explain this? You know how there's trees and there's branches. This is almost like the trunk of of a species. Like it has characteristics of goblins and hobgoblins and trolls, and those would be more the branches. But to put it quite simply, this this thing is. I'm kind of getting a vibe that this is almost like a like the like the primal genome of these people or, or creatures or whatever that is. Does anyone? You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Branches. So, so you're saying it has Trump. rings. Uh, do I, I believe it's a genetic progenitor of a goblin. Yeah, yeah, okay, there. Yeah, that's, that's the scientific way. Sure, sure, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So It seems like this is predates any kind of other... Like, this is a, a race that other races stemmed off of. Does that make more sense? Yeah. That so, so why would these creatures randomly appear again? Maybe unearthed, or... Possibly. Do they look... Do they look subterranean? Mm, they do not. Mm. Well, I, I should say, it's kind of hard to tell, but if you lift up its eyelids, like, it doesn't have the the kind of pale-looking eyes of what you would expect to see of a subterranean creature. Most of its skin, though, has been burned away. Right. So, Interesting. Okay, so it, it's not, alive. not underground. Recently comes, has a time schedule. What's what's in this area? What's in those woods? Is it just woods? As far as you know, yes. I, there I are was, there I are was hoping the old man was still with us. Oh, uh yes. Um as far as we know, just the there's the woods and the mountains. We've never had a problem with them before. We didn't even know they existed. Until recently? It's been going on for uh, about three months now. We haven't been able to send for help because there's no one to help us. Yeah, you kind of are in the middle of nowhere. Um, Gar comes I mean, walking has up. Anything changed? Has anything changed in the last three months, old man? I mean, uh, just the attacks. Hmm. Like a there was a... where you shouldn't have formed, or mining where you shouldn't have mined, or anything like that. Well, I will say there there was a man. Who came through town? A nice man. He was a bard. Sang a couple songs in the tavern and said he was going off to explore the mountains for some lost treasure. It's always the bards. What kind of, what kind of treasure? Always the, always the bards. Oh, he never <laughs> said what kind of treasure. He just said he was a treasure hunter and was passing through. You have a name? No. He actually never gave a name, and we never really asked. Too many question marks. Mm. You said the mountains, and about how long ago was it? Uh, he came through about... maybe... four months ago. And the proto goblinoid attacks started... About three months ago. We thought it might have been him, but he, we never saw him again. Perhaps he the, a door that wasn't supposed to be opened. I mean, it's possible, but... You say they I only have... come every week, right? Every week. Seven days. I look at the rest of the group, so we're going to go hunt some big goblins. Yes, um, so. I would like to. Be so, we do about happen this... to be in the monster hunting business, if you'd like to employ us, sir. About this time, you guys hear a howl from the north. This mournful, like, I instinctively hide. <laughs> Whatever it is, it sounds like it's in pain. I look at bro. I checked my stomach. No, it wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps that is our heading. How far away was that? It's hard to tell, uh, judging by the size of the creature that you were looking at. If it was one of them, it probably at least... Mm, I'd say... Uh, three quarters of a mile up the hill. 
You said it sounded like it was in pain. That's what it sounds like. Okay. Alright, so if we do this, I know Rodney wouldn't join us. He would stay with the cart. Correct. I have nothing to worry about. Any of our belongings being taken. Yeah. I turn to the old man. How much will you give us per head of one of these creatures if they're causing such news? Oh, we we don't have much in the way of gold, but it's true they don't have much money. Hey, guy, <laughs> the guy turns to you and looks to you at you curiously. He's a good judge of uh, monetary status. I see. We're reasonable <laughs> sorts. We don't charge nominal. Yeah, but we do have to eat. Well, if it's food that you need, we can provide provisions. We don't. We most of what we deal in is trade of goods. We don't deal with coin. We had again. He kind of gestures around. We don't have much to sell. And no books or anything like that of that uh, nature. Well, I have a small collection of books. Mostly local histories and a couple of scrolls. If you, uh, if you'd like, when this is done, I will give you a pic of my collection. I look at the others and go, are we okay with... I'm okay with some care spices monsters. and stuff, and do you have a medical kit? Um, I believe, be uh... <laughs> I believe Gertrude, our hedge witch, would have something to your needs. Okay, so I'm okay, because it's just a small town. I don't want to rip them off. We could do book spices, and a medical kit. Go kill some big green things. If they don't need the heads, we have trophies. That works for me. I was going to say, I believe I'll that food us to dinner. That's reasonable. Again, we're reasonable people. We are in the business of hunting down monsters for their parts <clears throat> I think this is uh, quite amenable okay so those of you I'm assuming all of you are heading north um, yeah we're gonna leave Rodney the cart glowy horse and Ollie okay all inside the wall area That's Rodney's like I'll okay I'll, uh, I'll watch the cart guys Actually, uh, Rodney do you have another one of those circles that stopped the divination magic. Ooh, um, Even no, just a I small just, one. I just have the one, um, but I, I suppose uh, he runs down. He pulls it out. He, turn around. Okay. And he spins you around, and you he you feel like this weird like shifting in your back as he's like, okay, this wire here and this wire here, and you kind of feel this. A tingling buzz mm. at the small of your back, which is weird because stamp? a divination um, tramp stamp. Basically, <laughs> now awesome. This is this is only going to work for a little while. If uh, you use that too long, it will drain your power core. Oh. Okay. Well, I only need it for when we're going out now, because I don't want them to find us in the middle of the woods. If you let the he kind of looks his. Uh, wrist looks up at the sun, looks to the left, and the I look, right. I look at Bro's watch, which is just his wrist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have fine. about um twelve hours. I look at the group. Think we can do this in twelve hours? What time of day is it right now? Uh, you're looking at about eleven o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Challenge right. Accepted. How hard uh -huh. can it be? Don't <laughs> ever say those words. words. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys who are going, mm -hmm. please make a s the who's gonna lead who's gonna track down these creatures? I was planning on stealthing ahead to scout, but I don't need to. I'll stealth in the back. I'm down for a little stealthy, but I think bros are sca our survivalist. True. Okay. I can I can certainly try. I can turn into things. I can do things. 
Oh, can you turn into a pup? I mean, not a pup, but a big pup. A pup pup? Yeah. Wolf wolf pup pup? I could. And then we could smell the dead one and maybe get a track on it. <laughs> it's charred. It. I'll cut it open. <laughs> yeah, okay. Then it's just slightly charred. Heather's had very animated faces for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All in character. <laughs> Oh, um, did, uh, did we get the metal kit before we go, or no? Uh, did you want it before you left? Mm, you didn't specify. No, we're okay. We'll take it later. I have all my spells. We're good. Okay. Um, so. I could do, uh, I could be a panther. I could be a wolf. Mm -hmm. Can you be a bigger wolf, or just a wolf wolf? No, a wolf -wolf? half is as far as I can go right now. Okay, then, yeah, just a wolf. I think a wolf gives you smelly powers. Or bear. Right. Either but one of those. We, we've established that it only works for perception checks, not survival. Yes, but he could smell the corpse and then track with the corpse. Perception would smell I still will... perception. Hmm? Hello? I'll let the DM resolve the whole scent tracking thing before I tell you what I'm doing. Oh, I'm just waiting for people to decide what they're doing. Oh, um, I will put Dewey in the air. I will not see through his eyes or anything, but I will tell him to act autonomously and fly, you know, uh, uh, maybe a half mile ahead. And if he spots any of these creatures, to return and let me know, and I'll be able to communicate with him. Okay. Yeah, and if you ever do want to go into his eyes, just let Cogno, he'll pick you up. Excellent. Just carry you around. Quite humiliating, but uh, convenient. You can't see it, you'll be fine. I can feel it. <laughs> Alright, yeah, let's head out. Scarlet will we never have... let me you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll turn into a panther, and I'll smell this thing, and try to get a whiff of it in the air. Okay. And see what I get. Go ahead, and make a... Sur or not a survival check, a uh, perception check. Perception? Yeah. Alright, let me see if I do performance this time again. <laughs> see how well you can persuade the environment. <clears throat> hey, you seen these guys? <laughs> okay, and actually go ahead and make it with advantage. Oh wait, it's already with advantage for your perception. Nice! Yeah. Uh, nice. nice. <laughs> I'm like damn, you're rolling quick tonight, baby. Okay, all right. Bro, and you're putting it in work. God damn. So, you kind of sniff the air and begin heading north through these deer trails that these things have been using. Um, Jester to the group. Yeah, everybody is just like, follow that cat! <laughs> and go <laughs> charging <laughs> after this panther. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember I'll, I'll stay with the sneaky group. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gar I'm sorry. I'm not being sneaky right now. This is awful. Uh, what? Um, what about Gar? I was just saying you're in the underbrush with that stealth roll. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are stealth. It ain't uh, bad. Oh, I won't stealth. I'll sit on Gig's shoulder then. Meanwhile, gig is okay. just remember, stealth is at half speed. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to be sneaky, <laughs> poor cog. Uh, <laughs> sticking close to the bro. Okay, so can we say Scarlet guys... is with us? Yes, Scarlet will be with you. If they start getting too far ahead, I'll hop off and I'll start moving at normal pace. So. You guys go charging up the hill, following the panther. It's hard to keep track of Bro, the the black fur kind of slipping between trees and almost disappearing, but you manage to keep up. You get to a clearing where a, uh, a couple of the deer trails intersect. And in the middle of it, you see a large ape-like creature. Its leg is caught in a bear trap. And it's currently trying to wedge its fingers 
edge of the teeth. And it's looking around, like, trying to find something. And it pulls at the the chain. And it's... You can see that the chain is now is anchored into the ground. I look at I look at bro. And Panther for him. I will mentally communicate. Yep. <laughs> it, it kind of it looks up, sniffs, looks at all of you. I'm assuming he doesn't speak common. I definitely said no. that that <laughs> that is in every Wait, tongue hold on i have something for this oh no goblin oh, fist pump <laughs> oh uh, I... <laughs> they don't know it <laughs> does it actually speak goblin at us it's not speaking it's, it's just roaring, roaring at you <laughs> and with that we're gonna call it an evening oh man oh, oh, right. Oh, right. thanks lily Technically, he does have a goblin fist pump. From I do. Goblin I learned it from before. from uh, Green Chief Hulk. Yeah, yeah a this lot guy of... doesn't know it. <laughs> a lot of things have happened this episode. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it got okay. hurt. Yeah, first it time. Got uh, hurt. Yep. Big took damage. Yeah. Pew pew pew. I mean, we'll we'll Bro get got some more... polish on that. Yeah. Bro got the <laughs> most twenties ever in this game. <laughs> yes. Right. What oh, is happening? Like a yeah, well, I think it's just Kyle, because like there was the the double nat twenty in Hoda <sighs> on a disadvantage. What? Well, yeah. like okay, so then earlier earlier seven earlier said something about bro, and I was like, well, that hurt my feelings. So let me just run a let me just roll a con save to see if I keep my monkeys up. That was a crit on a con save that wasn't even asked for. <laughs> it reminds me of our um, so on our Saturday game. Uh, I ended up getting like six natural twenties in the span of like ten minutes. Wow! <laughs> Last no, it's bullshit. Insane. <laughs> the escape from Natune went way better than I was afraid. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was afraid that guy was going to be like, dash action, dash shoot, <laughs> fuck action surge, die. I can't believe he fell for the old acme painted wall trick. <laughs> that was <laughs> that good. Trick- that trick's that was, pretty OP. That was awesome. That was a good <laughs> one. To be fair, it's I rolled ass a really defeated by a can save. Whatever. Uh, all, all it takes is one. Mm-hmm. Oh, he failed to save for that one. Pretty great. That's pretty good. Just the whole pull uh, out of nowhere, just pull the whole uh, side landscape that's on wheels that they use yeah. in, the, in Hollywood, just yeah, pull it out to the mm-hmm. front. Mm-hmm. Instant I, uh, in instant uh, Hollywood exit state. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what? Just to take it a step further, it has a door in it, and he walks through the door, and it's just a cliff, and it's <laughs> like the old school Wiley e. Coyote stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he just keeps going there as long as he doesn't look down. There wasn't a cliff there before, but now there is. <laughs> if I get my hands on. Uh, you know, in Critical Role, those ink pots that Jester found? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, then you could yeah. actually do that. Yeah, technically, yeah. Yeah, you definitely can. <laughs> you can literally wily coyote somebody. That's, uh, that's amazing. It's okay, mm-hmm. guys. Give me, give me a couple more levels as Gar, and I'll uh, take a... I'll, I'll start being able to make traps, and then we can sell pitfall Ooh. traps to people. We'll have a ton of money. <laughs> 